So uh, welcome everyone to Saskatchewan's Best Birding Hotspots with Stan Shattuck. I am Virginia with Saskatoon Council on Aging. I would like to begin today by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is Treaty 6 territory, traditional territory of the First Nations and the homeland of the Métis. And just a little bit about SOA for those of you that may not be familiar with us, we are a nonprofit organization dedicated to promote positive aging for all in an age-friendly community. And we do this by providing programs and services that promote dignity, health, and independence for older adults 55 plus. So just some, a few housekeeping details. If you could please remain muted and try to keep your background noise to a minimum because we all want to hear what Stan has to say. And opportunities for questions will be provided after the presentation. So you just type your questions in the chat box and um, just type them in the box at the bottom of your screen or at the top, I think if you use an iPad. And there'll be a survey that pops up right after the, uh, the meeting's over. So make sure you watch out for that. So now I'll introduce Stan Shattuck. Uh, Stan has a keen interest in both birds and astronomy for over six decades. Um, he has been a past president and active member of both the Saskatoon Nature Society and Nature Saskatchewan. After retiring in 2018 as the astronomy instructor at the University of Saskatchewan, he volunteered his time leading birding tours with Saskatoon Custom Bird Tours as a fundraiser for Saskatoon's Living Sky Wildlife Rehabilitation Charity. His goal for these tours is to make Saskatchewan an important ecotourism destination. And so now here's Stan. Hi, well, thanks for uh, inviting me to uh, give this presentation. Uh, I, I noticed a few names I recognized on the uh, list of participants here. Uh, so let me get started. Um, I'm going to, let me see, I want to stop my video. Uh, share the screen. There we go. So hopefully uh, everybody can now see uh, my opening screen. Um, so yes, uh, as was just mentioned, uh, since retirement, I've been uh, uh, quite busy volunteering for a number of uh, birding related uh, projects in and around Saskatoon. And one of them is to uh, uh, lead both private and uh, public group tours uh, on behalf of Living Sky Wildlife Rehabilitation. And uh, for this uh, coming summer, we've got, uh, I think, over 37 different uh, tours uh, that people can participate in, in around the province and including several uh, overnight tours to further des destinations. So I picked from those um, uh, four destinations, uh, which I, which I'm sort of ranking in the top of Saskatchewan's uh, birding hotspots, uh, because of the variety of different kinds of birds found in these locations, uh, mainly. So let's uh, go, move on. And so for the, what's wrong here? Here we go. So I thought we'd start right here in Saskatoon for. Uh, my first uh, recommended destination. Uh, and this is uh, a park at the extreme uh, eastern edge of Saskatoon called Donna Burkmeyer Park. And it's actually the largest of uh, Saskatoon's naturalized parks and probably the largest park in, in Saskatoon. Uh, some of you I'm sure are not familiar with the term naturalized parks. Uh, in Saskatoon, we have a wide variety of parks that the city has built for a variety of different reasons. Uh, many of them are, are set aside for sport, for use by sp sporting groups, uh, soccer, baseball, football, etc. Other parks uh, are designed uh, from a horticulture point of view to uh, provide very nice uh, uh, environment for walking with flowers and, and nice trees and uh, grass. Uh, but they, we have a small number of parks in Saskatoon, uh, which are called naturalized parks. And these are actually designed uh, to actually uh, protect uh, bird life and allow people to observe birds at, at these locations. So one of the largest of the 
a few naturalized parks in Saskatoon is Donna Brookmeyer Park. It's located off of Taylor Road at the intersection of Slimman Road, which is an interesting uh, name. Jim Slimman was a friend of mine uh, for many decades, a very active uh, birder in Saskatoon. So I'm, I'm quite glad that he had uh, a road named after him right next to this park. So Donna Burkmeyer Park uh, has quite a variety of birds. Uh, in checking the eBird list, I found 155 uh, different kinds of birds that have been reported uh, by various people uh, from this park in the city. So it's a good, <coughs> good place. Uh, and one of the reasons <coughs> that it has such a high uh, number of birds is because it has a variety of habitats. So there are a number of ponds in the park. There's also woodland, there's and grassland and bushes. So each of those different um, habitats provides attracts a different uh, group of bird species uh, to this park. So the, the purpose of the naturalized parks are to enhance, as I said, bird habitat. So one thing that you'll notice is different in this park than most other parks is the grasses are allowed to grow long to provide nesting habitat for grassland birds, uh, such as this uh, Western Meadowlark. And probably this is about the only park I think in Saskatoon where you have a chance of hearing a Meadowlark sing. And the pathways through this park allow anyone to travel all over the park, whether you're on foot or even in a wheelchair, uh, it's quite accessible. Now there are about four different uh, fairly deep ponds in the park. So they attract a group of ducks, which we call dabbling ducks. And there is about seven species of ducks that are dabbling ducks that are regularly found in this park. Mallard, uh, pintail, blue wing teal, green wing teal, gadwall, shoveler, and American widgeon. So you'll, you'll find those, most of those kinds of ducks on any visit. Uh, to this park. Uh, there are also some uh, what are called diving ducks that are found in the park uh, regularly, five different kinds, canvasback, redhead, uh, lesser scop, bufflehead, and the one pictured here is a ready duck, one of my favorite ducks because of its courtship uh, behavior in the springtime. <coughs> And other water birds that attracts three kinds of grebes, pied-billed grebe, horned grebe, and uh, this picture, which is redneck grebe. Um, as was mentioned, I've, I was born and raised in Saskatoon. I lived my entire life in the city. And when I was young, I've been birding since I was six years old. And uh, redneck grebes were actually quite scarce uh, around Saskatoon when I was young. They, we only used to find them up in the northern lakes of the northern forest, but now they've become quite uh, plentiful in many uh, southern lakes, including right here in, in the city of Saskatoon. Uh, the ponds also attract uh, shorebirds uh, such as killdeer, uh, willet, spotted sandpiper, the one pictured here, and other uh, birds associated with the ponds. Uh, pelicans uh, sometimes land on the larger ponds. Uh, herons uh, may show up, such as this uh, photo of an American bittern. It seems uh, bittern is one of the birds that uh, most people have a hard time spotting, but uh, this part is one of the places where you actually might see it here in within the city. So that's some of the birds you can find from the ponds, other, uh, other parts of the park where there's bushes and woods, you can find a variety of flycatchers such as this uh, Eastern Kingbird, pictured here with a dragonfly. Um, brown Thrasher uh, is a bird that you often hear more, more likely than see, um, but it has a very loud song and uh, its song keeps changing, but it always repeats every phrase. So if you hear a, a bird changing phrases, but uh, repeating each phrase, then it's going to be the brown thrasher. So uh, if you're welcome, 
I strongly recommend that you visit this park on your own. And if you're looking for a tour guide sometime, we uh, live at, uh, we run uh, tours there on April afternoons, uh, as well as mornings and afternoons from uh, May through September. One of the more, ex more exciting parks for birding here, right close at home here in Saskatoon. Okay, now going a bit further afield, um, the um, we have uh, Duck Mountain Park, and this is one of my favorite parks for uh, looking for uh, bird, woodland birds, um, mainly birds from uh, that are more plentiful in eastern North America. So uh, some of you may know Duck Mountain Park is situated near the Manitoba border uh, due east of Saskatoon. Uh, this forested park uh, has one large lake uh, called Madge Lake, but as you can see on the map, there is a, a wide number of very small lakes, and it's often the small lakes that have uh, some of the more interesting birds. And as, a, as I mentioned, it's a great place to find uh, some birds that we don't see in the rest of the province, but uh, show up here from uh, Eastern North America. And over 200 birds uh, species have been reported from this park uh, uh, to eBird. eBird, if you're not familiar with it, is a, uh, is a bird sighting reporting platform run by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Um, and people from all around the world uh, report their bird observations uh, um, on, this, on this platform. And then biologists and ornithologists can use the data for research. And it's a very user-friendly platform for birders because it helps you keep track of the birds you've seen on any particular uh, location or province or, or life list that you might, ha might have for your own personal uh, interest. So some of the special birds in uh, Duck Mountain. Uh, the one pictured here is a small bird uh, called a Nashville warbler. There's actually 16 different species of warblers that nest in the park and a few others that pass through in uh, spring migration, spring and fall migration. And <coughs> in my opinion, this is the best uh, location uh, in Saskatchewan to see the Nashville warbler. The Nashville warbler uh, is relatively uncommon in the rest of the province. It, it does sometimes show up on rare occasions in Saskatoon during fall migration. Um, people have seen it and photographed it in Saskatoon, uh, but it's a bird of the northern forest and primarily the eastern forests in Saskatchewan. So Duck, Duck, Martin, Duck Mountain Park is probably the best place to see this little guy. Uh, along with many other warblers. Um, it also attracts a number of interesting uh, forest birds. Uh, there are six species of raptors that uh, nest in the park. So this one pictured here is a broad-winged hawk, which are uh, never common anywhere, but it's, uh, I think on just about every uh, birding trip I've made to Duck Mountain Park, I found at least one uh, broad-winged hawk. Uh, so this is a, a type of buteo hawk, very broad, wide wings uh, and a broad tail. But you'll notice the tail has a very distinctive black and white uh, set of bands, uh, which uh, no other uh, buteo uh, in Saskatchewan has that, uh, has that characteristic. Um, so there's, I should mention, you also find some of the other raptors of interest, uh, such as um, bald eagles and um, bald eagles, ospreys are found in the park, as well as you know, red-tailed hawks um, and uh, other things like uh, turkey vultures and, um, and some owls. Uh, other special birds are woodpeckers. It has a good variety of woodpeckers. Uh, Seven different species of woodpeckers are found in the park. Uh, and it's one place where I've been able to see both kinds of three-toed woodpeckers, which are the type of woodpecker that 
um, people are mainly interested in looking for because we don't see them very often around Saskatoon, although they do sometimes show up here in, in the wintertime. Uh, this one pictured here is the American tree-toed woodpecker, which has the uh, pattern on the uh, white bars on the back. And then there's another similar species called the uh, black-backed woodpecker, which is also found in, in some of the very old um, old growth forests uh, within Duck Mountain uh, Provincial Park. Uh, flycatchers, it has eight species of flycatchers uh, nesting in the park and probably one of the best places in Saskatchewan to see the great crested flycatcher, which is a very large flycatcher with a, a, yellow, a yellow breast, as you can see, and a reddish tail. Not uh, very rare around Saskatoon. Keep, uh, bird, keen birders sometimes see one in, in spring migration passing through Saskatoon, but pretty hard to find uh, close to Saskatoon, although they are found a bit north of the city. Uh, but probably Duck Mountain is uh, one of the best places to find that flycatcher, along with uh, along with many other uh, flycatcher species, uh, least flycatcher, alder flycatcher, um, peewees. Uh, you could get western wood peewee there. You could also get eastern wood peewee there because that's about where the eastern um, that's about the border or the limit for the range of eastern wood peewee just barely crosses into Saskatchewan. <clears throat> uh, what else? Uh, Phoebe's, Eastern Phoebe would be there. Um, and uh, Eastern Kingbird, etc. Uh, there is seven kinds of uh, native sparrows that nest in the park. Uh, the one I've pictured here is, uh, is a swamp sparrow. Uh, sitting on some cattails, and so I've uh, seen and heard uh, quite a few swamp sparrows in the marshes near the shore of the lake. Uh, there is a very nice uh, short birding trail uh, next to the campground, uh, next to the main campground in uh, Duck Mountain Park, and we always find uh, swamp sparrows there. Okay, um, so uh, this year um, I'm leading a, a special group birding tour there uh, from June 7th to 10th, in case anybody's interested in, in joining us, uh, you can look up the details on our website uh, for that special trip. But if you're there on your own, you're going to see uh, quite a variety of birds. Okay, next area is probably my favorite part of Saskatchewan and from a birding perspective. And I think uh, from most birders I've talked to, the Cypress Hills is their favorite uh, uh, destination, mainly because it has a unique set of birds that are not found anywhere else in the province. So I'm sure most of you know where Cypress Hills are located in southwestern Saskatchewan, <coughs> near, near the Alberta border. Um, there are uh, actually three blocks uh, to the Cypress Hills. Uh, the center block is the main park. It's, it's actually pretty small and only a tiny fraction of that is actually uh, a provincial park. This park about right here uh, is a park and that's where most visitors to Cypress Hills go. Uh, the other part of the park is a more of a wilderness area. It's the West Block, and the West Block actually straddles the Saskatchewan-Alberta border. So it's an interprovincial park with uh, the Saskatchewan side, most of the Saskatchewan side being a park, and all of the Alberta side uh, being a park as well. Uh, the third block is the East Block, and I suggest very few people actually visit the East Block because it's uh, mainly uh, private property, uh, but there is a very nice uh, regional park called Pine Tree Coulee uh, near uh, near East End that's found in the East Block, and uh, it's certainly there's a number of special areas that I've I uh, visited in the East Block, which has uh, which have some very interesting uh, birds to look for. So one thing that's unique about Cypress Hills is it's the only place in Saskatchewan where you can find uh, lodgepole pines. Lodgepole pines are a very 
a pine tree with a very straight trunk, very different than the jack pines that we see in uh, northern Saskatchewan. And so these lodgepole pines attract their own unique birds to the park for that reason. And we also see a variety of other birds because, uh, at least in my opinion, I would classify the Cypress Hills as a subalpine uh, region from a birding point of view. It's, uh, some of you may know that uh, the highest point uh, in Canada between uh, Toronto uh, and, uh, and Banff uh, is the Cypress Hills. And over 180 uh, species of, been, of birds have been reported uh, to eBird from, from this region. So some of the special birds to look for, um, cinnamon teal, this brightly colored duck, uh, sometimes shows up in, around Saskatoon. And we put it out on, our, on the Saskatoon Nature Society's rare bird alert when somebody finds one near Saskatoon in springtime. Uh, but they are found much more uh, plentifully in the region uh, near the Cypress Hills. I wouldn't say that they come into the hills, but they are uh, in the area just immediately adjacent uh, to the Cypress Hills, especially Cypress Lake on the south side of the hills. <coughs> this is a bird that I found uh, quite, quite fascinated with at the moment. It's called the common poor will. It's a bird uh, very, very few people have ever seen or heard. Uh, it's a nocturnal bird, so it only comes out when it's very dark. Uh, sometimes when you drive some of the back roads in the park, you come across them sitting on the road where this uh, photograph was taken, uh, I believe. Um, and sometimes you see them, uh, they show up in your headlights when you're flying around. They're not too common. Um, but it's probably the west block of Cypress Hills is the best place to find this bird in Saskatchewan. But interesting, uh, but what I've uh, recently uh, noticed is uh, they're a bit more plentiful in the province than we realize. They, in addition to the Cypress Hills region, um, they, they occur in the west block. Um, some birders from Prince Albert uh, discovered that they are actually in the last few years, uh, located in the center block, and um, some other friends have found them uh, in the east block of Cypress Hills as well. In addition, I've uh, recently learned, uh, well, I've been listening to uh, uh, bird, uh, bird songs on recordings that uh, biologists have put out into the field. I've been uh, listening to these uh, recordings and uh, writing down the species present based on their songs. And uh, I've heard uh, one recording of a common poor will from north of Saskatoon, which is way out of its normal range. And I've also heard a recording from a uh, near Dory Lake, uh, surprisingly, which uh, suggests that a common poor will might rarely occur there. Other people, uh, told me about a, a rare poor will in uh, Grasslands Park. And finally, I get to brag that uh, some of you might have noticed a short write up in the Birds Canada publication uh, that this winter I actually discovered uh, common poor wills uh, at two locations in Manitoba. And I made the discovery from my living room by simply listening to uh, uh, recordings of calls made by these automatic uh, recording units at night. So that was actually the first confirmed record of that species in Manitoba. So uh, they're probably more widespread than, uh, than many birders realize in Saskatchewan. Other uh, special birds in Cypress Hills, the, uh, the junco there is different than the junco anywhere else in the province. Uh, it's, um, they're all, officially called dark-eyed juncos. All the different kinds of juncos in Canada were lumped together as dark-eyed juncos, uh, but they do look different. And the ones in Cypress Hills are, the, are called the pink-sided junco subspecies. And you'll notice the, the rich coloring on its, uh, on its sides in this photograph. So that's the junco that replaces the normal slate-colored type junco 
that we see in the rest of the province. Uh, the flickers in Cypress Hills are different than what you see around Saskatoon. Around Saskatoon, we mainly have the yellow shafted flicker subspecies. But in Cypress Hills, you have uh, red shafted flickers, or at least a, a, a gradation. The ornithologists such as Karen, Dr. Karen Weeb, who recently retired from the University of Saskatchewan, uh, has been studying flickers all across Western Canada. And she's been able to uh, basically document that the color pattern of, of flickers varies from dark red in British Columbia to yellow in Eastern Canada. And so we do get a, uh, a gradation in sort of a hybrid mixture of colors all across Saskatchewan. Another unique woodpecker is the red nape sap sucker there. So here's a photograph of a red nape sac sap sucker. It's very similar at first glance to the mo much more common yellow bellied sap sucker, which we do see in Saskatoon, mainly in migration. Most of them nest in northern Saskatchewan, but a few of them nest at places like Pike Lake. Uh, this, uh, uh, this particular bird in this photograph is not a yellow bellied uh, sap sucker. And the difference is, is small. You have to look on the back of the head. And this small little red patch there you know, makes it a red nape sap sucker. And as I said, uh, Cypress Hills is the only place in Saskatchewan where you will see red nape sap suckers, but almost all of the sap suckers in the Cypress Hills are red nape sap suckers. So a different species. Another unique endemic species found nowhere else in Saskatchewan is the Medullivray's warbler, uh, a warbler with a yellow belly and a gray hood. And the difference is that uh, in spring plumage, uh, this bird has a, a very prominent uh, set of arcs above and below the eye. It's not a complete ring like the Connecticut warbler. Um, it's in the fall, uh, morning warblers start to look a little bit like McGillivray's warblers, but in the springtime, um, they're quite obvious. You can tell them apart quite easily. <coughs> and so this is actually one of the more common warb uh, warblers that you will hear singing if you go for a hike on uh, some of the trails in uh, any part of uh, the Cypress Hills. Another special bird found there is the Audubon's warbler, which is uh, now a subspecies of yellow rumped warbler. Uh, most of yellow rumped warblers we get in <coughs> near Saskatoon uh, are, fall in the myrtle uh, subspecies, which have a white throat. And you can see in this photograph, uh, the Audubon's warbler has a yellow throat. So that's the difference. And so that's the, the special, uh, that what's, that's what makes this uh, special for the Cypress Hills region. And flycatchers. Uh, flycatchers, a lot of flycatchers look very similar to this uh, photograph. And it's a group of birds, as the name suggests, that uh, eat a lot of uh, flying insects. <clears throat> they often sit on a perch, and then if they spot an insect, they fly off the perch and grab the insect and return to the perch. And there is a group of them that are <coughs> extremely confusing for birders called the Impidimax group of flycatchers. They're very small. The most common ones we have in the province is, well, the most common species is least flycatcher, uh, very common around Saskatoon. And then we also get the alder flycatcher through Saskatoon. And if you're in southern, southeastern Saskatchewan, you might get the willow flycatcher. But all of these flycatchers are extremely difficult to separate by sight, but you can actually identify them very easily by song. They all have their own unique songs. And so I highly recommend um, that birders learn how to. Uh, how to identify birds by song. And for this group of birds, um, the, uh, there is a, well, basically for this group of flycatchers, the best way to identify them is by song. In fact, most people won't accept a, a visual uh, 
identification. It's best to best to identify it by listening, listening to the song. <coughs> so this one is the dusky flycatcher, which is again uh, one of the more common flycatchers in Cypress Hills, but found nowhere else in Saskatchewan. So you do need to go to the Cypress Hills to add this uh, bird to your life list for Saskatchewan. Yeah. And sort of describe the song as chip it chewy, uh, which is very different than the songs made by the other flycatchers. So that's one reason uh, to go to Cypress Hills, just to see this uh, or to listen to this flycatcher. Maybe I should just mention in passing that if anybody's interested in, in learning uh, bird song identification, I'm putting together a series of uh, workshops on, via Zoom that'll take place on Wednesday evenings in um, the month of May. And you can see them uh, described on our website. Now, uh, what's creating a lot of excitement in Canada is Cypress Hills uh, recently has been discovered to be the, the only place in Canada where this flycatcher occurs, uh, which is called the Cordilleran flycatcher. Oh, however, there is a little bit of debate taking place about this species. Uh, the species used to be called Western flycatcher. So if you have a very old fly, uh, bird book, it might be called Western flycatcher in that book. Um, I forget when it was, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, uh, the ornithologists uh, uh, decided that they should split Western flycatcher into two species, Cordilleran flycatcher and Pacific slope flycatcher. And that was based largely on studies done in Colorado and California. Noted, notice uh, where they noted a very distinct difference between the two species. Uh, but it's quite, uh, this is one flycatcher that you can sort of tell from by sight from any other flycatcher in Cypress Hills. It has this rather unique ring around the eye. Notice it sort of teardrop comes to a point behind the eye. No other flycatcher uh, that we have in the Cypress Hills region uh, has that shape for, uh, for an eye ring. And you notice that the color is quite yellowish. <coughs> in fact, it's probably a brighter yellow in Cypress Hills than any other place where the Cordilleran flycatcher is found. It seems the color uh, intensity increases as you go further north for the species. Now, the name would suggest Cordilleran flycatcher should occur in the Rocky Mountains uh, in Alberta, um, but uh, the People studying uh, the species out there have found that there's a lot of hybridization occurring between Cordilleran flycatcher and uh, Pacific slope flycatcher. Uh, so many Canadian birders think that uh, the two species should be lumped um, back to the uh, previous uh, single, single type uh, called Western flycatcher. Uh, but uh, and in fact, uh, to identify the species properly, uh, you need to record its song, but not the song it gives, uh, not the call it gives during the daytime. You have to record its song given before dawn. So once this species was reported in Cypress Hills, a friend and I drove down to Cypress Hills and we camped overnight. We found the location. Its, it's location is very unique. It's nesting in Battle Creek on places where the uh, embankment has been eroded, so there's a very steep embankment. And the nest, we actually found the nest of this, uh, this bird. The nest, it's nesting on the embankment just below the, uh, below the grass on the top of the embankment, uh, sort of in a hole. So a very different nesting location than for any other flycatcher I'm familiar with. Anyway, so it's quite this, uh, exciting to make this discovery. Uh, Robert Johansson and I. Uh, uh, recorded the song and we posted it to eBird. And uh, I think most of the consensus is that this is indeed a Cordiller and flycatcher, although probably in a few years it might get lumped uh, back into a uh, Western flycatcher. Okay, other, uh, so my last destination uh, that I wanted to uh, share with you uh, is Grasslands National Park. Uh, that's an incredible 
park in uh, near the U.S. border. Um, I've been actively involved with Nature Saskatchewan for all my life, and way back in the 1960s, uh, Nature Saskatchewan proposed uh, that the government create Grasslands National Park, and it was a very, very, very long process. The government, I discovered that governments are not really interested in setting aside parks uh, for uh, protecting birds and habitat and, and wildlife. Um, so we had to wait for an awful long time, but then it was a very, very slow process. But uh, now we have a good chunk of Grasslands Park has been uh, has finally been set aside. And it's a very interesting area to visit if you haven't been to it. Uh, one of the more likely places to see golden eagles in the summertime in Saskatchewan is in Grasslands Park. <coughs> so this is a, a golden eagle. And you can notice the golden color right there on the nape of the bird. And this is not a full adult, this is an immature. They have, you need, I think they need to be about five years old before they you know, obtain complete uh, adult plumage. So this one, you notice there's some white feathers on the rear half of the bird and dark in front. Uh, that is just the opposite of the pattern for an immature uh, bald eagle. An immature bald eagle has the white areas on the front part of the bird and dark at the back. So golden eagles uh, do nest in, uh, or do nest, I believe, in Grasslands National Park. Other special birds in that area include uh, one of my favorites, the uh, shorebird that's found on the prairies, the uh, long-billed curlew. Uh, here is a rather special photograph of a uh, bird found in Grasslands Park area, the Fruginous hawk, uh, perched on one of the one of the geological formations in the park. And a rather nondescript bird is the grasshopper sparrow, uh, which has a very high pitched uh, song, uh, similar to a Leconte sparrow, but the grasshopper sparrow the song is about twice as long. And it's uh, a special bird found uh, in south southwestern and southern Saskatchewan, and Grasslands Park is probably one of the best places to locate it. And um, it's actually a great place to hear uh, any of the wide variety of songs from sparrows and other uh, songbirds found in the grasslands. Uh, I like to describe it as a prairie symphony. Uh, unfortunately, most of us live in very busy neighborhoods with lots of noise pollution. Um, but if you get a chance to go out on the prairie on a, on one of those rare days when there's not a strong wind, uh, you can, especially down there, you, there's, you're treated to uh, a wide variety of melodies from many, many uh, different uh, birds. All, unfortunately, all of these grassland uh, songbirds are, are declining severely in numbers simply because we keep uh, destroying grassland habitat in Saskatchewan. We have only about 13% of the original uh, prairies left in Saskatchewan. And most of those have recently been uh, uh, been privatized. Okay. You know, other birds that are found there are birds like the Sprague's Pippet, um, um, lark buntings, lark sparrows, uh, baird sparrow. Uh, it's a very beautiful uh, song. And the long spurs, uh, uh, chestnut colored long spur and uh, thick billed long spur. Thick billed used to be called McCowan's long spur, but its name was recently changed to thick billed long spur. And thick billed long spur in particular has been declining very badly in Saskatchewan. And it's now only found just very, very close to the US border. And chestnut colored long spurs have also declined badly in. In Saskatchewan, um, when I was young, uh, we could drive out and, and find uh, chestnut collared long spurs singing uh, just east of Saskatoon, near near Porter Lake, near Burke Lake, especially. But they're not there anymore. Uh, but they are still found in Grasslands Park and a few other areas, very close to the U.S. border. Yeah. 
Curlews are found in the park. So um, just to sort of finish up here and then we can take some questions. Um, so I have mentioned uh, Donna Berkmeyer Park, uh, Cypress Hills, uh, Grasslands Park, uh, those areas we, uh, I'm leading a tour to both Cypress Hills and, and ending at Grasslands Park from June 12th to 17th this year. And we also have uh, special tours to uh, Grasslands Park on May 14th and June 25th returns. So, um, and I, the photographs I've included, uh, a lot of them came from Nick Saunders and an uh, old friend of mine who's passed away, May Higa, and a few of the others were taken from the Macaulay Library of Bird Images. Uh, I also just wanted to end by mentioning uh, some other things that uh, we are offering in the near future. We have some signs of spring fruit birding tours happening on Sundays in April and May. And one special event at night is uh, Sounds of the Night Fruit Birding Tour. If you're interested in driving out at night and listening for owls and frogs and uh, whatever, maybe some snipe and whatever other uh, sounds of the night that we might hear, uh, we're planning to drive up to the Nisbet Forest uh, for that event on April the 15th. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're also running a series of four workshops for people interested in learning some of the more common um, bird songs found in Saskatchewan. And finally, uh, we're just getting started to run our dancing grouse tours. And I wanted to show a 10 second video here, if it'll work for me. Well, what's happening very close to Saskatoon. So, uh, we have a, a very nice location, very close to the city where I take people. We've got a professional blind set up for any photographers out there, but you do have to do it very, very early uh, in the morning. Anyway, so I'll stop uh, yammering uh, at the moment, and uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll see if I can answer them. Well, thank you so much, Stan. Uh, we'll take some questions from the uh, audience. You can type them in your chat box. And we've got, I see we've got a couple already. Um, what is the best place in Saskatoon to see a bluebird at this time of year? Uh, bluebirds, the, um, that's one of the birds that we look for on our Signs of Spring uh, birding tour. Um, I saw one uh, on a trip recently to Pike Lake. So between Saskatoon and Pike Lake, you can sometimes find bluebirds. I don't think you'll um, find them within the city of Saskatoon. That's very unlikely to see them in the city. They're a, more of a rural bird. Uh, they like uh, grass, uh, they like very sandy soils, but there's also some areas near uh, Langham, north of Langham, which are good for bluebirds and some areas near uh, Dundurn. And here's one um, about uh, for people without cars, is there carpooling available now? Um, for the tours I, I'm i offering at the moment, uh, we are following, we're still following COVID regulations. And so most people like to be in their own vehicle. Uh, as soon as uh, the COVID numbers uh, drop, uh, so I'm hoping that will happen later on this summer, then, then we'll start. Uh, doing some uh, carpooling on our tours. Um, how different is the poor will from a whip poor will? Well, well they give a different, uh, somewhat similar, they're related birds. And I should mention or brag that Saskatchewan is the only province in Canada with three species of what are called night jars. Uh, the, um, so the common, the most likely one you will see is the common night hawk. And that's sometimes seen in Saskatoon, and it has white bars in its wings. Uh, when I was young, it was very common in Saskatoon. Uh, when I worked in the downtown public library decades ago, uh, I would see maybe seven or eight Nighthawks walking from Nutana to the downtown public library. Uh, now it's a rare species in Saskatoon, but you can find it in northern Saskatchewan or in various places in Saskatchewan. Uh, the reason the, the Nighthawk is 
has dropped is because of we use pesticides to get rid of insects. So there's no there's no more mosquitoes in Saskatoon. So the and the nighthawks were um, sort of need insects or need bugs to eat. So so we've basically destroyed nighthawks by getting rid of mosquitoes in Saskatoon. Uh, the whippoorwill is found in northeastern Saskatchewan, um, uh, north of Carrot River. Um, and it's call it goes whip perill whip perill, and it's a bird from eastern North America that just barely comes into Saskatchewan, uh, in in that area north of uh, of Carrot River, and the poor will is a western bird that comes into Saskatchewan mainly in the Cypress Hills as well as the Great Sand Hills, and it goes perill perill perill, is its call. I'm not a very good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm not a very good at, uh, get, at relating its call, so um, if you don't have it, uh, there is a free app called Merlin, uh, which has all the bird songs uh, found in North America on it. And here's another one. Um, can you put bird houses in Donna Burkmeyer Park? Hmm. <coughs> I don't think I know the answer to that question. I'm, uh, I doubt that anybody would object. Uh, if you put them on a tree, you might, uh, it might be good. Uh, I'd suggest hiding it in the, in, in the wooded areas and then maybe um, you might get a tree swallow uh, nesting in the park. Um, but you could check with the city uh, for any regulations, but I can't think of any reason why they would, would object to that. Are there any more questions for Stan? Well, spring is coming and I encourage everybody to get out and see what you can find. There's a, a host of birds uh, in Saskatchewan to see. I've just mentioned uh, three areas, um, or Donna Burkmeyer Park, Cypress Hills, and um, and Grasslands Park, uh, southeastern, every, basically, you, if you go to the borders, you find different bird species in different parts of the province. So you find different birds uh, up in the boreal forest than you do on the prairies. Um, you know, some <coughs> other very good birding areas in Saskatchewan would be places like uh, Last Mountain uh, Lake. Uh, bird Sanctuary, which is the oldest uh, bird sanctuary, oldest federal bird sanctuary in North America, uh, set up actually by Sir John A. Macdonald. Um, the Service River in southeastern Saskatchewan has many unique species, uh, Moose Mountain Park. Um, and there's many other places, but unfortunately, uh, we have a severe shortage of, of parks in southern Saskatchewan. Um, I've spent a lot of time uh, volunteering for the bird atlas and you know, recording birds in western Saskatchewan, basically between the Alberta part border and uh, bigger. And there's not a single park. Uh, there's not a single provincial park uh, or a regional park in that area south of the South Saskatchewan, or south of the North Saskatchewan River and north of the South Saskatchewan River, which I think is a real shame. So I don't know why we're not interested in, in creating more parks in our province. Thank you anyways for listening to us and listening to me and uh, check us out. And as I say, all of our, if I didn't mention it, all of, I volunteer my time leading these tours. So all the proceeds support uh, the work of Living Sky Wildlife Rehabilitation and taking care of injured and orphaned uh, birds and small mammals. Can you give us the name of the uh, the bird song site that you mentioned before? Sure. It's um, if people use the name Merlin, M-E-R-L-I-N, if you just uh, search for that on your app provider, you'll find it. It's uh, it's an app uh, produced by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Well, there's one more question. Uh, many birds at Turtle Lake? Her, yes. Um, uh, Muriel Carlson used to have a cabin at Turtle Lake, and I used to visit uh, her family there quite often, along with many of my birding friends. And uh, 
Turtle Lake may be one of the best places to find a wide variety of birds in Canada. When um, Muriel Carlson uh, volunteered in uh, participating in breeding bird surveys. So breeding bird surveys are a standard survey where a uh, volunteer birder goes out and drives a, a 25 mile route. And instead of stopping at the best birding locations, you, st you stop every half mile. So it's a better indication as to the, it produces better scientific uh, data uh, for telling you what birds are present in that area. And the, uh, when she was doing it, um, she found more species of birds on her breeding bird survey than for a few years anyways, than any other breeding bird survey anywhere else in Canada or the United States. So uh, Turtle, Turtle Lake is a fantastic area because it's right at a transition between the boreal forest on the north and the prairie prairies on the south. So you get both prairie birds there and, and boreal forest birds. Thank you, Stan, for this fascinating look at all our province's birding hotspots. And thanks everybody for attending our uh, workshop today. And don't forget to check out all uh, our upcoming classes, programs and events on our website, scoa.ca and watch for the survey to pop up after the meeting ends. So thanks Stan so much and thanks everybody. We'll see you yeah. next time. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye now.